Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt. That, however, is not Adam Glenn. We've got a fill-in this week. Joe Partavia is coming in to fill in for Adam. Joe, thank you for joining me, buddy. Uh, this is an honor for me, Dax, because for years and years and years, when I worked in radio in New York City, we worked every day to try to crack into TMZ. We, every time we did an interview, we're like emailing your guys at like 6 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. So it is an honor to be on the same stage as Dax Holt, because for years, all I wanted to do was be in your hemisphere. So I'm, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, buddy. And uh, listen, you are no newbie to this entertainment world. You were at WPLJ in New York for, what, 20 some, 24 years you were there? Yeah. Yeah, I started as a Jeez. young intern, worked my way up, and then in 2019, our company was sold to a Christian broadcaster. So I like to say I was fired by Jesus. So if you're going to be fired <laughs> by anybody... I mean, you want to be, be fired. You let it be him. <laughs> well, thank you. I know you and Adam go way back. You guys are buddies. So who better to fill in than one of Adam's buddies for Adam? So thank you for being here today to help me do the raw rundown. Right, you're welcome. And I'm, and I'm going to try my best because that those are big shoes to fill from Adam. Glenn. Yeah. Don't mess this up. Okay. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. I hope. <laughs> All right, let me read a quick review before we jump into this. Uh, this one comes from Allison B. One, two, three, five stars, titled My Number One Podcast. This podcast is amazing. I've always loved celebrity gossip. When I moved to LA, my curiosity for celebrity lives kind of uh, lives kind of dwindled because it was I was in it. But since moving back to the Midwest and having three littles fourth two and one is their age Damn. i can't seem to get enough of it adam and dax are the perfect source for all celebrity news i especially love the facebook group where they can share all the information together it's such a fun community thank you guys for being uh bringing us this amazing content always look forward to listening allison bale bayless thanks allison that's a great review um and uh, dax, yeah. I, i'd rather you didn't read these reviews because now i, I have all this pressure because i didn't think this show was popular <laughs> I thought this was just something that you guys did Dude. on the side when people actually listen to this. It's well, it's just Allison, Allison, oh, okay. and uh, you All know right. her three kids are the only Got ones that listen. Right. But listen, I, we appreciate them. A lot of pressure. Oof. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess. Well, I guess we can jump right into it then. Yeah. And you guys, and and let me get this straight. You guys count down in numerical order from ten to one. So fittingly, we should start with the number ten story. We should. All right. Number 10 is Bo Bobby Altoff, uh, who I think a lot of people know her from TikTok and Instagram. She is the podcaster that is super deadpan. She does all these huge interviews with all types of big celebrities out there. But the way she interviews people, it's just like she has no emotion. It's so funny. I think she really became like in the, the celeb culture realm when she interviewed drake that i think that interview really put her on the map well her and her husband are calling it quits uh they are headed to divorce um i guess her husband actually filed the legal documents according to tmz and uh, this is now citing irreconcilable differences after four years of marriage and they listed the separation date as july 4th so he put up a big old well, both of them actually put up a big old long statements basically saying that they love each other. They were, you know, great when the time lasted. She was actually very kind when she put up her Instagram post. She said, as most of you heard, Corey and I have filed for divorce. I'm sad right now. I'm so thankful for the time I got to be his wife. Our girls are so lucky to have him as a father. And I'm so lucky to be a co-parent with such an incredible father in person. While a relationship did not work out as husband and wife, we will always be friends and I will always love him. What a nice like post it's it's nice but you mentioned the drake of it all and i think that's where it all kind of went downhill especially and you and you mentioned the fact that no one really knew much about her until that drake thing popped and then all of a sudden you start hearing all these stories and then mysteriously which podcasters and youtubers don't do this she pulled that interview with drake down because that there was were rumors weird. that 
there was something was going on. No one does that. No one ever. Like people that have been canceled don't pull stuff down. So it's very <laughs> odd that she pulled that down. Then rumors start circulating that she fooled around. And then all of a sudden, fast forward and they're getting split up. Is there smoke with fire here, Dax? Do you think Drake had something to do with this? I mean, it it was a weird story because a lot of people were talking about after their interview, there was some hookup. Again, all rumors, alleged, yeah. we don't really know, but there was a lot of rumors that flew around at the time. And then that was the weird part, that this interview that literally put her on the map disappeared off the map. And so I think it added fuel to the fire of like, wait, why would she pull that down? Is there was there something that happened between these two because she was married and now flash forward to today and her and her husband are now splitting. And there was a, uh, a little tidbit in there that uh, she did the uh, the Kiki Palmer podcast recently and okay. Kiki asked her, hey, when was the last time you spoke to Drake? And she said a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago. And she said he's a very nice person. So. I don't know. Like she clearly keeps in contact with him. Interesting. Now, could this be, could this be a status issue? So maybe it's not infidelity. Maybe it's a status issue because we see this all the time. Dax, you've seen it your entire life when someone is in a relationship and then all of a sudden the rocket to stardom takes off. Like within a month, there's divorces. Uh, I mean, I remember recently Jeremy Allen White from the from the Bear, happy family, mm -hmm. kids, known his wife for years. The Bear explodes, and then you're like, oh, cool, this is such a great story, and then boom file for divorce so i wonder yep. if there's a status thing here where they were on the same sort of playing field when they started and then all of a sudden her just star just took off and and he couldn't handle or she or maybe she just changed during that process so it does happen a lot when you see people's careers take off well here's a question for you is he in media or is he in some type of i don't know the guy from Hollywood? adam okay he, so very that, i mean that's... i don't know from adam that's what I feel like I see a lot is if someone has some level of fame, like both of them have some level of fame, and then that fame skyrockets for one person and not the other person. Right. That's when I see them split. I've always felt like it's good when you have someone who is in the spotlight and then the other person is not because then it kind of equals itself, you know, mm. or they're not like Maybe. jealous of the other person's success. Um, but I do think super fame quickly when a, f a couple is not used to it could be probably pretty difficult. Mm. And I hate to do it, but their number nine story is a breakup too, Dax, which I mean, we're, hopefully we get to some happy news, but I, I, we have another breakup to, to talk about as well for number nine. I'm like, and, and of course it's like all these, like, uh, I don't know, TikTok people, but Charlie D'Amelio and uh, Landon Barker, Landon Barker is Travis Barker's son, have split after a year of dating. Obviously, Charlie D'Amelio is one of the biggest people on TikTok. She really became famous with her and her sister. But then Landon Barker, I mean, he's well known because his dad had the reality show years ago. He's Travis Barker. I mean, he's all, all in the media. But they became like kind of like the it couple for uh, a lot of the younger generation. And they have now decided they will no longer be dating. And, you know, she showed up on a lot of the Kardashian stuff because, well, uh, Travis is with Courtney, mm. And so by proxy, they got to hang out with the Kardashians and um, be on the show and get to go to the big parties and all of that. So she will not be invited to the big parties anymore. Uh, but it does oh. sound like the statement that he put out is, hey, everyone, I would like to let you know that Charlie and I are no longer together. We broke up to focus on ourselves, which you're, you're still young. Go focus on yourself. It's all good. Plenty of time. And it's funny, too. This one never had a chance to survive, Dax, because did you hear about their uh, couple name? It was like Chardon or something Chardon. like that. I mean, <laughs> Charzar. I mean, the, it sounds like a weird, like the, something from a sci-fi thing. You, there's, you know, if it's a Benefer, <laughs> it, it, it just doesn't roll off the tongue like Chardon. I'm like, what is that all about? And you're right. They're in their 20s. They're going to sow their wallows now. They're both famous. They're rich. It's going to happen. They're going to hop around a little bit. God bless them. You know, yeah, they'll, they'll be fine. I'm not I'm not going to lose sleep over them. And you know what? Who knows? At this age, you break up, you date other people. You could find your way back together if it really is some amazing relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And number eight is a near relationship that almost happened, right? <laughs> this one's this one I found crazy um so kristen cavallari she is revealing that uh diddy once had a thing for her um and so she sat down she was doing her podcast 
and it's the Let's Be Honest podcast. And she starts talking about how many years ago, Diddy was kind of into her and was basically pursuing her and saying that, uh, I guess, on Valentine's Day was just showering her with gifts. And this was back when she was in her 20s. She said, it was the biggest bouquet of flowers I have ever seen, a large box of chocolates, a massive teddy bear, a boatlo- boatloads of tequila from his Ciroc vodka line, um, and De Leon tequila. And fast forward to, and she goes, it was this kind of shit you see in the movie. And then flash forward to today and all of the allegations that have come forward with Diddy and the way that he allegedly would prey on young women and, you know, get them into the record label. And just, you know, we've heard it time and time again from from different people in the industry that he, again, allegedly is not the best guy. She basically said, I dodged a bullet. Mm. And dodging in so many ways because of the fact that that's really cringy. I mean, when you're first meeting someone, to, like the 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 giant bouquets of flower on Valentine's Day, I'm like, dude, relax, just take it easy. Like, and she no, she did mention that there was no attraction there, but like, even that would turn off. I think most girls, if you're showering them with love early in a relationship on Valentine's Day, that is just like red flag central. And I'm, obviously, the, the flags were much worse later in life. But when you're doing that, and it's just such a weird thing, like he was asking to make out with her like he was like (laughs) you're diddy what are you doing it's funny because some you hear these stories and you think for someone like diddy like he wouldn't have to ask those questions you know what i'm saying like you're like oh it's diddy he's probably super smooth great with the women and then you hear these stories and you're like nope i guess he's just a normal weirdo (laughs) yeah and it, and the fact that she described it as a movie scene, because that's when when she was describing it, Dax, it was so funny. It's like it's something straight out of a rom-com that works. But in real, this is one of those th- things that happen in rom-coms at work. But in real life, they're like incredibly cringe. You know what's funny is she actually said that Diddy told her that he had a quote unquote TV crush on her. Like that's another part. Thinking about Diddy sitting down and watching Laguna Beach also makes me laugh because it seems very out of character for him that just Diddy's at home watching Laguna Beach and like being fascinated over this woman. But you also have to remember how big Laguna Beach was back in the day. Do you remember like when it was on and it was like season three, that shit was the biggest show on the planet. Oh, and everyone was a household name. Everyone was a celebrity. Basically, they were on the cover of every celebrity magazine. No, they were gigantic. And I get that. But an old friend told me this once, Dax, never date a fan because it just never works. Like, if you go back in the history, uh, I remember when Nick Cage married Lisa Marie Presley, God rest her soul. Like, he was a huge fan of Elvis. So all of a sudden, he wants to be in the world of Elvis. That didn't work out. And then recently, you saw Joe Jonas and... uh, you know, the girl from Game of Thrones, she was a fan of his growing up. Yeah, Sophie Turner, she was a fan of his growing up. That didn't work out. So, okay, here's, he's a, avoid, here's a question, don't date a fan. Well, what do you think about Taylor and Travis Kelsey then? Because he has was knowingly her fan and tried to get her attention. All right. With that, one's, <laughs> that one's different because I don't know if, if Travis was a Swifty. Like... Obviously, everyone who's like breathing knows who Taylor Swift is, knows their music if they own a device that plays music. Um, so I think that one's a little different. You're, you're right. It could go sideways. But I think in that, I don't think he was going to, you know, tr- following her on on tour before they started dating. Like he uh, she did he'd have like every I mean, he like uh, went to her concert with the bracelet. Remember that had yes, his, like, yes. digits but that was, on it so that he that, could give it to her and she could call him the whole thing. But that was during like the uh, the 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 romanticizing phase. That was he was trying to work his way in. I get it. L- listen, <laughs> I, I think with that one, he he was aware of her, and obviously she's attractive. She's smart. She's beautiful. So I I don't begrudge him trying to do that. But as long as he didn't have like 1989 tattooed somewhere on his body, I think we're in a good situation with those two. <laughs> I, I did think right when it started up, uh, this crossed my mind of. Is this a fan getting to date his, you know, his super idol? Or is this just a guy who shot, you know, got to shoot his shot and it landed? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it, I think it might be that one. I think I think you're right on that one. And unfortunately, now we got to move on to 
a, a horrible relationship story, which is one of the relationship stories that has lived on and on. This is this is the Titanic of bad relationship songs. My heart will go on in the wrong direction with the poor Sandoval. It it really is. What what number is this? What number are we on? I don't even We're know. Number, number seven. Seven. All right. Tom Sandoval claiming Ariana Maddox didn't pay for any of the bills for their home for like eight months. And so uh this aired on Vanderpump Rules. Uh, this was an, uh, basically a conversation that Tom and Tom were having together and just talking about how it, it felt very unfair. Uh, obviously, the whole cheating scandal happened. And then right after that, Ariana refused to pay for anything. Um, and keep in mind, they were still living in the same house together, but she stopped paying for her half of the mortgage. And so he goes, you know, my bank account was literally overdrawn. He was like, she she hadn't paid for any of the bills for like eight months. Um, and then basically saying that he was moving like $1,000 from this account to this account, $500 from this account to this account, just to be able to pay for their living expenses. And he said, I've been pretty much paying for everything out of my accounts, mortgage, gardener, cleaning, utilities, everything. It's kind of like pulling teeth to get Ariana to pay me back. Um, and like, I... So I'm a little conflicted with this because he was the dirt ball in this whole situation, cheating on her. Um, however, she refused to move out. So if you refuse to move out, are, do you have an obligation to still pay for the place that you live? And I would say yes. Yeah, and I think this is one of those situations where obviously he was the initiator of, of things going downhill, but neither of them have acted like adults since since it ended. And this you see this all the time when couples break up. No one wants to pay for this. They have joint credit cards. So it's one of those situations. And, and uh, funny, I did laugh at the part where he talked about transferring funds because I was like, oh, I thought that's something I only did having to transfer funds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to take this from my savings to my checking. So it, it, made, it hardened me to know that there's other people out there that are transferring money from account to account to pay things. But uh, that's neither here nor there. But I think it's just one of those things where this is going to drag on and on until they sell that freaking house. And I know at one point he was trying to buy her out of it, but then she didn't want to sell it. Um, so there's a lot going back and forth in, in that with, with in that respect. So uh, it is it's one of those things where, man, just just sell the house, just sell. Well, so, but here's the thing. If he legitimately wants to keep the house and he is willing to pay her out and keep in mind, they bought this house for two million. All right. She has claimed that um, he, he tried to buy her out of it and gave some like BS, you know, offer to her. Apparently that offer he is claiming was like $3.1 million. Whoa. So you're buying her out for more than what you paid for the house. I do, this to me seems like she just like she, she, she knows he loves the house and yeah. wants to make him sell it is what it comes down. To. I think there's just so much bitterness between the two of them that they are trying to, Oh, what's going to hurt. I'm going to do that. Yeah, she found it. And, and and there's so much baggage attached to this house. You would think at one point he'll be like, I just get it. Because eventually you both have to become adults and be like, all right, this is best for both of us. But you're right. He's probably really attached, loves the house. But listen, does he want to keep like transferring money from accounts <laughs> for the rest of his life? No, I think he's okay. going to want to move on. And that being said, how is he offering her $3 million if he is transferring money from here to here to here to pay for it? That's a great point. That's a really good point. Maybe, maybe he wants to take it from his 401k. I don't know what kind of uh, what, what what retirement plan that band of his has, but uh, maybe he's he's pulling it out of his 401k. You know how we all do when we're buying a house? We're, like, we're taking all the money, Robin Peter, pay Paul kind of thing. Maybe that's what he did with that. I, I, I got to think, though, they they have to make this drama continue because this <laughs> is the best saving grace for Vanderpump Rules. And the fact that it is now continuing on to a new season, I think that producers are probably like, how much can we milk out of this drama? Like, let's keep it going. Please don't sell the house. Let you know, I, I, I got to see this happen, because if this storyline goes away, what else does Vanderpump Rules have right now? I don't think anyone even can identify a, a storyline that they're interested in. And it's funny that you said that because if they can just keep the house, that's really the only thing that's keeping them together. So mm -hmm. if they were so basically if they do that, like, OK, there's there's no more drama. So that would be very bad for the show. But can you imagine living in that like both of them uh -oh. refusing to move out? You're living in the same house like. 
God, it has to sound like the worst possible situation that you come home and you like walk into the kitchen and all you want to do is eat, but the other person's glaring at you because how much they hate each other publicly, I got to imagine it is so much more when cameras aren't on them, when people aren't right. asking quite like, oh, that sounds like such a horrible living situation. Yeah. It, it reminds me of that movie War of the Roses, where Michael Douglas and Kathleen Turner, where they were divorced and they refused to leave the house and they were like setting traps for each other and making their lives miserable. That movie didn't end well because, uh, spoiler, both characters ended up dying. So let's hope uh, nothing like that, uh, nothing horrible happens in this situation. But War of the Roses is a perfect example of like two people shouldn't be living together when they're not supposed yeah. to. But I'm let's kidding. talk about love, Dax. Let's 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 <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about newfound love at number God. six. There is a lot of relationship stories this week. I did not there even is. realize how this whole week is just all relationship news. Yeah. But uh, this one's obviously it's a roller a coaster. Movie. It's up and down <laughs> and up and down. So now we're going back up. We're going back up now. Going back up. A good story. Uh, Kim Kardashian. Uh, it looks like she has a new love in her life. Odell Beckham Jr. Well. I would say new because it might be new to a lot of people, but there has been rumors for months and months and months that the two of them have been hanging out. Odell Beckham Jr., obviously big football player for people that don't know that name. Um, but uh, it seems like they are finally getting comfortable enough. There are uh, sources within their relationship that have been talking to Us Weekly saying they're getting really serious um, that his, his personality is a lot more private, according to them, and versus her, who everything's on display. She has a reality show. She, uh, you know, displays everything all over Instagram. She, she's a pretty open book. So to date someone who's a little more private, I don't know how that would go, because um, he, he does like the, according to them, low-key uh, staying out of the limelight because he's such a big football player. But Anyway, I guess they were spending some time together recently um, at a like a Grammys party, and a lot of people saw them together, which reignited the rumors of them being together. But I don't know. Um, I don't see this going well for them if if he is super private. I mean, it reminds me of Taylor Swift and Joe Alwyn, where mm. he was insanely private about their relationship. And I thought it was her the whole time, but apparently... It was him that didn't want to put their relationship out there. And I I think that can be really tough on someone, especially Kim, who her relationships is one of her biggest storylines on her TV show. Yeah. Yeah, no. And, and, and it's the funny thing is she's always we all know she's fond of athletes. So you get it from her perspective. Yeah. Uh, you just wonder how he's going to fit into all this because Odell, it, it's funny on the field. He's very flashy. He. He's he's very, he's very boisterous, but then behind the scenes, as you said, very chill. Um, but he's also very savvy. So I wonder mm -hmm. if maybe this comes into play for his future because he's a wide receiver. He's not going to last long in the NFL. So maybe he sees this. And again, not to seem like there's subterfuge or something nefarious here, but maybe this is, could be something good for him where he's in a great relationship and he can grow his brand and himself outside of football. Again, hopefully he also really likes her company and loves her, but he probably sees a future here where maybe now he can parlay this into the next phase of his career. Um, so that, that there's something there, too, that could be appealing. You know, being involved in showbiz, he loves L.A. Um, so I wonder if that, that could be a good fit uh, in the long run if he's able to, like you said, open himself a up and be on the show and talk about the relationship and stuff like that. So who knows? I'm hoping for love. There's been too much down, too much breakups this week. I'm, 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 say, I'm all about love. I, you're, you're, you actually have a good point that I didn't think about because, like, we're looking at Travis Kelsey, the guy. For a lot of people, there's a lot of people that were outside of the football world. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of Taylor Swift fans that now know Travis Kelsey's name, and he is now. I mean, he was already an amazing football player. Let's not take that away from him. He was no. huge. If you if you paid attention to NFL, if you paid attention to fantasy football, you knew Travis Kelsey. But his name now became popular to all those people that were outside of the football realm. And now, if he decided tomorrow to retire, he has an easy shoe in as a commentator because his name is so popular and everyone knows who he is. Yeah, and you could see Odell doing the same exact thing. And so, 
who knows? Maybe, we, boy, there's a lot of love in football and celebrities. So you know, there is a track record for it happening. So I'm hoping it works out. Uh, I'm just upset Odell never signed with my team, the Jets, but that's not a here or there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he you know he makes his choices, but uh, but I think that's that I think that's a good one. And now speaking of Taylor, some not so good Taylor news. It's actually very creepy Taylor Swift news that we've been reading about recently. It is super creepy. So Taylor Swift is demanding that this man stops tracking her private jet and posting the information all over social media. There is an Instagram account, and it's a, co- a Florida college student who uses public data and social media to basically track private jets of billionaires, politicians, celebrities, including Taylor Swift, and post it out there so people can see where they're coming and going and and flying around the world. And uh, so Jack Sweeney is his name. He has, uh, I guess, been studying information technology at the University of Central Florida. He received a cease and desist letter from Taylor saying, stop tracking my private jet. (laughs) You are tipping off stalkers to my location. Um, And basically in the letter, it's saying that, you know, there's people who have intent to harm her or have nefarious or violent intentions, and you're giving them a roadmap to her location. Super creepy. I know that this... um, this exists. I think there, I think it's what like jet aware or something like that. It's some website that it tracks all information. The thing is with that site, you don't know whose jet is whose. You just see the, the, the jets flying around the world. This guy is putting a spotlight onto celebrities. Um, He did this with Elon Musk for a while as well. I guess he's got numerous different Twitter handles. Elon originally had basically said, look, this guy has freedom of speech. He's allowed to do it. I, I can't even stop him. He and tried. Then, like, he, he tried. And <laughs> he then tried. he ended up deactivating that account anyway, uh, because it's it's it is risky for a celebrity for people to know exactly where they're landing, where they're going to be at that time. You know, um, and, and so I 100 percent get Taylor's issue with this guy. She already has so many issues with stalkers, with intruders, people breaking into her different homes around the world. Um, and and this is just one more mode of someone getting information. So I get her feeling on this. I 100% think that this is not just free speech. This is someone violating someone's privacy. Absolutely. And I think the one thing that on the Jack Sweeney point of it is he think he's being altruistic about that. He thinks he's doing a service because he's saying all these people that are flying private are it's a it's a terrible impact on the environment, which some mm-hmm. people do. And and she's actually countered and said that she's bought carbon points and everything like that to to help the the environment but uh the creepy factor of it especially with taylor swift you detailed the number of stalkers i mean i i feel like you could probably do a show on the stalker of the week for taylor swift these days because there's someone always breaking into into one of her properties so i wonder if there's a way for someone to do this that's not so creepy and not i guess maybe not do it in real time like if he did it like after the fact I think I could be like, oh, and then, you know, not that I like shaming people, but after the fact, he could be like, hey, look at Taylor Swift went from Rome to Japan to Las Vegas. Uh, look how much, you know, how uh, impact she's had in the environment. But he's doing it in real time very quickly. And again, it's dangerous for these people. So there's got to be a way of him doing what he's trying to do without doing it in a way that's going to harm people. That That's the, that's the at the end of the day, that's the gross and, and really creepy part of the whole thing. Yeah, I think I think that's a great point. You you put out the information when they are not vulnerable at that point. If you, if you are really trying to get your point across, you can add up the miles that they traveled, add a, make it into a big package story about how she traveled a million miles in one month and how she's destroying the, the planet. If that's really your objective to do, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't like I don't like giving stalkers the roadmap to her house or where she's at. And there was a wrinkle to the story, Dax, too. Uh, I'm sure you saw it. She sold one of her planes. So she oh, now has only – she she has one plane now. So I don't know if they if, if this is, if it had anything to do with it, coincidence or anything like that. Uh, but, yeah, the fact that Taylor Swift had two planes is pretty crazy. But, <laughs> but, so she, because who needs two planes? Well, when, you're, plane, when no. you're that rich, when you're Taylor Swift rich, um, you can have two planes. It was the one she sold that had, like, the, the colored stripes along the side and the yeah. number 13 next to the it door. It was a smaller the one. Photo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she kept the bigger one, I guess. You know, like some people have like a sports car and SUV. That that's, you know, that's how she Taylor Swift is with planes. So, uh well, yeah, no, it's, it's it's sad. 
And we'll see. Uh, I mean, she travels all over the world in that plane. Um, and she's supposed to travel this weekend, obviously from Tokyo, where she just had a show, back to Vegas for the Super Bowl to be there to support Travis. So, you know, she she gets the miles out of that plane. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Literally. Yes, she does. Yeah. And, you know, it's great. We should segue here from, you know, you cut your teeth back in the day covering mm-hmm. a pop superstar. And that's that's coming up in our next story here. Uh, who goes back in old school. This, this is probably going to be a lot of retro vibes for you, this next story. Right, Dax? Well, this is a story that no one even knew was a story. But Britney Spears claims that she made out with Ben Affleck back in the day. Uh, really random. She, she posted on Instagram a throwback photo of Ben herself and Diane Warren years ago, just out of nowhere. And she basically said... Hey, look, this is um, from years ago. Uh, It was a really cool pic of me and Diane Warren and Ben. She goes, he's such an amazing actor. actor, uh, She mentioned, she said, he's such an amazing actor. Did I fail to mention I made out with Ben that night? I honestly forgot. Damn, that's crazy. And then she continued, please, I wish I could tell you guys the story that happened before that. Oh, dear. I'm just being a gossip girl. I totally actually forgot. Oh, okay, Britney Spears. Like, where the hell did that come from? That she is just airing out this laundry. Um, she, I feel like she just doesn't give an f these days. No, like, no, like between no the book and all, like Ben Affleck sitting at home with J Lo, and he's like, "Come on, Britney! Like, what are you doing to me here? I'm trying to be a serious filmmaker here. Stop that! <laughs> trying to win Oscars. You know, it's so funny. You talked about earlier Travis shooting his shot with Taylor. It's and to me, when I read this story, I was like, this is Ben shooting a shot. He was this, he was probably like 25 years old at the time. Yeah, He's- but okay, wait, wait. Let's be careful with this because if I did the math and no one, Uh-oh. I don't, I haven't seen anyone do the math, but this photo was taken back in 1999. If I'm doing the math correctly, that means she was like, what, 17 back in the day? Yes. Because she, yeah, she's 17, 18. Yeah, it's it's really close it's on from the, the board, line. Yeah. It's yeah, on yeah. the border of when, uh, how old she was during this photo. Yeah. Um, I thought you were going to point out the fact that there's po- there's a possibility that uh, Ben was dating Gwyneth Paltrow at the time because that was and, around that era where those two were kind of on 100%. and off. So. <laughs> they were on and off all during that time. So you've got her super young. You've got his relationship with Gwyneth Paltrow. She's, it's like, what? Like the whole thing is... <laughs> pretty intense when you when you really look back at it and i just think there's got to be a side of like j-lo's like reading the news this morning she's like ben seriously britney spears seriously (laughs) (laughs) although in ben's history that's probably not the worst hookup he's had you know the previous hookups have cost him his like life so i think maybe in this grand scheme of things you're right i'm sure i I, knowing j-lo she's probably busting his chops like relentlessly like uh, probably she's probably playing baby one more time in their mansion right now just to just to tease them uh but i think it's more probably a joke <laughs> within the two of them because both of them could probably look back and be like man i can't believe i hooked up with that one person right but, uh, but to you come out of funny. nowhere is bad now now that we said ben affleck's name i just remembered i had a dream jen gardner was in my dream last night she was riding in the plane in front of me in my dream like we were sitting i think it was me it, i think it was me and my wife and then the row in front of us was Jen Gardner and her daughter, and they were like making all this racket that I, it was the weirdest. I'm like trying to piece it together. You know how dreams they make yeah. sense in the moment, but then you try to talk about it, and you're like, none of this shit makes sense. <laughs> no, it actually does make sense. I actually spoke to a dream analyst once, and I asked mm-hmm. her because I'll sometimes get random like celebrities pop in our dream, and she she said that if you see a celeb in your dream, someone you've never met or kind of know they are a symbol for something. So whatever Jennifer Gardner means to you has something to do with something that's going on in your life at this moment. So if you think about it, like whether it's like, okay. It it was, no, it wasn't my wife. It was my mom that was sitting next to me. That's right. So it was my mom sitting next to me. And it was funny because I was like, oh my God, do you see who's ahead of us right now? And at that moment, (laughs) Katie Holmes walked up and started talking to Jen Gardner. And, and then Jen Gardner got up and like started talking to my mom and my mom goes, Hey, 
do you know who that is? That's Katie Waters. And I was like, mom, that's not Katie Waters. It's Katie Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was like this whole thing where I was like, wow. mom, like you, you're talking about the wrong celeb, but, but you're talking to the celeb. And then I think I woke up. It was a really freaking weird dream though. Wow. That's bizarro. <laughs> but sorry, I can't help you with that. I was trying to help you with the Jennifer yeah. Garner thing. So but... explain, what does yeah. that all mean? I, I cannot explain. No, I need to know. I, I did ask, it's funny, I don't know if you ever have recurring dreams. So the reason I, I, I spoke to this person was because I have this recurring dream of my teeth falling out and, mm -hmm. um, and my teeth are missing or something. It happens a lot. And I said, and I said, what does that mean? She goes, it's a common dream for people that are loud, obnoxious, and extroverted <laughs> because your, your subconscious <laughs> is telling you, you screwed up. Like your subconscious <laughs> is saying, you shouldn't have said what you said. So the next time you have that dream where your teeth fall out, it's your subconscious telling you regretting something you had said either recently or to someone that you regret but didn't think about in the moment. <laughs> your, your subconscious saying, shut the fuck up, Joe. It basically is, yeah. SFU, <laughs> yes. That's exactly what it is. Uh, oh, that's so oh by funny. the way, I just saw the Tom Cruise movie. I finally saw Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning. Oh, how one. was it? Although I now. It it's okay. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like it's, there's a lot going on. Like I, I didn't love it as much as the other mission impossible movies, but Tom is coming up next on the countdown. And it's funny. My wife and I were watching it and we're like, Tom looks, he looks different. There's, mm -hmm. there's just something different about him. And now a lot of reports are that. Yeah, he really does look different. Yeah. So th this number, what are we in three? Number three. Yeah. So number three is, Tom Cruise showed up to a gala in the UK and a lot of people saying they don't recognize him. They're saying his face <laughs> looks very different these days. Um, you know, he was posing with, uh, with Prince William. They were having a little chit chat. Um, and I've seen so many people doing articles about his look. I've seen this evolution where people are putting up photos of him throughout the years and how he's evolved so much. Listen, do I think he looks that different? Eh, not so much. But what I think we're seeing is maybe there's like Botox going on. And so the normal forehead wrinkles that you yeah. would see are gone. Right. And sometimes when people get Botox, especially men, they it like drops their eyebrows down. And that dropping of the are eyebrows. Are you speaking from experience, Dax? I, oh, I've had Botox before. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, right. yeah. I, you, I, I was gonna say, man, this guy. Are you a dermatologist on the side? Like, you know a lot about this. No, oh, I, I, I apologize. I, no, I did it once, and I felt like I looked different. See, look, you can tell I don't have it because I got forehead wrinkles. Oh, you got three, yeah, yeah. Um, but it, I remember it dropped my eyebrows, and I didn't like the way it made me look. Like I was like, oh, I don't like this because I don't feel normal, and I don't feel like I look like myself. And that's kind of what I feel like I'm seeing mm. in Tom is. You're missing it. Something just looks off and your your brain can't really figure out what it is. Yeah. I mean, the picture, it still looks like Tom Cruise. Like, I don't want people to be like, what did Tom Cruise get an all new face? Like, it's still Tom. It just looks like different is the only way you could describe it. Just there's something slightly off and it could be the Botox. And, you know, when people go to galas, my wife and I went to some gala the other day and she spent all this money on eyelashes, went to Botox, got a new dress. So I wonder if Tom knowing he was going to be hanging out with the Royals. We're going to go to a gala. Got to get the tux ready. Probably w called up his uh, plastic surgeon, dermatologist. Says, hey, I need a little couple nips in theirs or a little injections. And uh, that's what that's what we get now. It's possible. He kind of just got a or, little refresher. Or it's Tom just looking older and we're just not used to seeing it. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the funny thing is, though, like, how old is he now? He is. I, I checked. I think he's 61, I believe. 61. Dude looks so good for 61. Oh, though. Like, my God. When he was in Top Gun and the dudes rolling around without his shirt on the beach with all the yeah. other guys that are literally half his age. Oh, or like, quarter. <laughs> How does he do this? Yeah. How does he stay this in shape? I don't get it. Yeah, and I think he's one of these people that since we've known him for our entire lives and, and the yeah. fact that he started at such a young age, we've seen his evolution. And and I think we've all said, my, my God, he's aged so gracefully. You know, at a certain point, there's a there's a change that takes place where you're like, oh, OK, now he's now he's an old man. He's 60. Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that is what it is. But he's still doing goofy stunts in the new movie. He does this weird thing. I'm sure you saw when it went viral last year of like he's jumping off a motorcycle off a cliff and it's crazy. Uh, he's in great shape, but maybe he just wanted to get a little before he saw William. He's like, man, Doc, 
Need some of that Dax Botox. <laughs> give, me, give me a Dax. They call. G- it. Give me, give me that flat forehead, that <laughs> droopy eyebrow stuff. Uh, no, I, we, listen, we don't know what it is, but he just he does look a little different than yeah, normal. Different. That's that's all we can say. All right, and at number two, it's the gala itself. Prince William uh, uh, making it out, making it in public. It's been a it's been a really wild few weeks for the Royals, Dax. Yeah, um, yeah. So Prince William, this is the first time we've seen him out since obviously Kate uh, Middleton went in for her abdominal surgery. This is uh, on the heels of King Charles uh, announcing that there he is dealing with some treatment for cancer. It's a unspecified cancer. Um, I'm, I'm not really seeing. I know a couple weeks ago they were talking about him having an enlarged prostate. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if the two are related, but everyone is all the stories. Everything just says an unspecified cancer. So I, I, I can't tell you what uh, cancer treatment that King Charles is doing. Um, but Prince Charles, uh, Prince Sorry, Prince William uh, went out there. He he was giving a speech at London's Air Ambulance Charity Gala Dinner. So this was on Wednesday. And uh, it was actually pretty funny. He said, you know, good evening, everyone. Thank you for all being here tonight. And thank you for all those who have had the hard work, uh, whose hard work has made this evening possible. I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you also for the kind messages of support for Catherine and my father, especially in recent days. It means a a great deal to all all of us, but this is where he got funny. He goes, it's fair to say the past few weeks have uh, had a a rather medical focus. So I thought I'd come out to an air ambulance function to get away from it all. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's a great line. I love it. But uh, it sounds like Catherine's doing all right uh, during her recovery. And now we're all just kind of sitting back and waiting on any King Charles news. Isn't it weird with the Royals that when it rains, it pours news. It's, it's like the weirdest thing. Like we won't hear anything about the Royals. Then all of a sudden, like there's two medical ex- like emergencies going on at the same time. Like when the Megan and, and Harry thing was going, there's like a hundred stories going. It reminds me like going back to the old Britney days when there was like a new Britney story <laughs> every day when Britney was going through her meltdown phase. But it's like, isn't it crazy how like all this just seems happening at the same time and all the time? Like they just it's, spread out a little bit. <laughs> it's always amazing how much news they are constantly have going on just in general. Like this family, the amount of scrutiny over every single thing they do i i don't know if i could handle it honestly i feel like my brain would explode from everything you do people are criticizing scrutinizing applauding all of it oh and i did see that uh prince um harry did go out to be with his dad i did see that little visit yeah a little visit you know putting aside all the drama and everything uh he goes at the end of the day it's my dad. I got to go see him. Yeah. Well, I mean, we saw with the the Harry and Meghan documentary on Netflix within the last couple of years that it, it's part of the business model. Like you, you're just you have to be open. You have to you have to talk about yourself. You have to, you know, the, 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 this this sleazy stuff that, the you know, the trading stories behind the scenes to make one person look bad or good that it seems like a 24 seven job. But there could be worse jobs to have Dax than. <laughs> than to have the entire nation at your feet. And even though they don't really rule. I mean, they basically do whatever they want. They're yeah. they they have uh, they have a salary for doing nothing than going up and showing up at events. So there are worse lives out there, Dax. You're right. Uh, Sign <laughs> me up for it. Sign me up. All right, I'm in. You talked me into it. <laughs> Go get some more Botox and get you get yourself a crown, Dax. All right, let's move on to the top story of the day, Dax. Uh, top story is. Obviously, uh, there was a video, a naked video Mm. of Drake that was leaked all over the Internet this week. Allegedly. Causing a lot of headlines, causing Twitter to go insane. Uh, This video is of Drake. It looks like laying on a bed, just playing with his wiener, videotaping Mm. himself in a mirror. Allegedly. Um, And yeah, it went very viral this week. It was all over Twitter until Twitter said, nope. No more. We're shutting down these videos, which is interesting because obviously Twitter allows or X, I call it Twitter, but yes, X allows a lot of like pornographic videos. But because it seems like it was a leaked thing that shouldn't be out there, they were able to shut down a lot of these videos, but not before millions and millions of people viewed the video and had some really funny comments to say because everyone was shocked of uh, his manhood size. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> it seems like he is kind of unbothered by the whole thing. I mean, he literally put up a a photo 
from inside his private jet that just said Cashville, I'm home and just kind of moved along with, you know, there was no uh, acknowledging the video was out there, no trying to hide away from it, no nothing, just continued on as normal on social media. Um, I think a couple of his buddies had uh, had reached out to him, uh, and, and Aiden Ross, I guess, claimed that Drake laughed it off. He said, you know, he basically sent him a text the other day that said, you know, damn, dude, saw your <laughs> stuff online, and he, he just kind of responded back with some laughing emojis and moved along with his life. Well, Dax, it's funny you said that you that X slash Twitter took it off. The, but if you try hard enough, you can find that video. So if you're listening to this podcast and you really want to see what we're talking about, it's readily it. available out there. And so, when you first saw it, Dax, yeah. were you like, oh, yeah, that's that's totally Drake? Because the, obviously when you're covering a story like this, everyone has to say it's allegedly appears yeah. to be Drake. Were you like, yeah, that's that's Drake. That's Drake. Allegedly. I mean, look pretty much like Drake to me. Uh, it looked like Drake to me. I mean, if you can look past the anaconda swinging through the video yes. and see right. his face behind it. Um, but the other part is, I don't know if you saw, so Drake has a, a pretty well-known private jet. It was this mm -hmm. like $185 million private jet that he was gifted back in the day. Um, and we've seen all these photos from inside and one of the bedrooms in there has this pretty recognizable arched bed, Headboard. Front, yeah, bed, backboard, mm -hmm. kind of matches up with the backboard inside this video of of Drake allegedly. So it's kind of hard to say that it's not him when it looks very much like him in a room that we know he has on his plane. Yeah, I mean that's probably the 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 downside of getting a free plane. You constantly have to post pictures and videos about it. I'm sure that was probably <laughs> part of the deal. So we know that plane very intimately because of the mm -hmm. fact that they gave him a free plane. So he's going to have to post about it from time to time. And so it's obviously the same room. And it, it allegedly it's it's straight. <laughs> but but it's funny though, Dax. We're old enough to remember a scandal like this would ruin lives. And I love the fact that we're in 2024. And your video of you manipulating yourself just kind of is a drop in the bucket. No one yeah. even cares. Like, it's more of just a, a trivial thing. It's more of like, oh, I wonder what that looks like kind of thing. It doesn't – like, and you saw Dick, Drake, he laughed it off. Like, yeah. it makes perfect sense. But you, if, imagine that happening in, like, 1999, 2000. Mm -hmm. I mean well, – Remember, like, Pete Wentz had a, a photos go yeah. viral that were – you know, and that was one of the kind of like first ones that I feel like a celebrity got like leaked photos. And now we've seen a billion leaked photos out yeah. there. I think the funniest part, though, it's not the video of him. What I like is all the people making fun of it. And by making fun <laughs> of it, they're they're honestly giving him props. But it's yes. like people laying in bed kind of reenacting it but they've got like the vacuum hose between their legs that they're like <laughs> flopping around back and forth yeah. and it just makes me laugh when people like make fun of the situation or lighten the situation yeah. um that's what i like yeah and you made a great metaphor there or analogy or whatever it is like the anaconda that like if you do not <laughs> if you do not want to see this video take dax's word for it <laughs> and just imagine that's, that's a, all a that's all i gotta there. tell you that, that's that's all it looks like but I also got to think, like, other than people seeing his wiener. Allegedly. Like, I think it does more good for him than Hawk. <laughs> True. All right. I mean. That, I didn't see anyone being it. like, oh, that's embarrassing. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously it's embarrassing. I joke, but it is embarrassing if someone obviously doesn't want their their body out on the internet. I can't joke too much about that. But no. that being said, you know, it's not like it was something that he is going to go home and be like, I can't believe the world saw my tiny wiener. Like that's not yeah. the case here. No, that's true. Good point. But again, it all goes back to consent. And obviously he didn't consent that to go out. He had sent, probably sent that to a lady friend or, or a male friend who knows what the hell he sent it out to. And all of a sudden, you know, now it's out in the middle of this whole hullabaloo that's going on with someone he was sort of tangentially connected with. So got me something. There. The whole thing something. is crazy. Um, but there we go. That is our top 10 stories of the week. Your raw rundown. Um, by the way, that was really fun. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate you joining me this week and uh, and going through the, the rundown with me. This Don't tell Adam, but now you're going to have to fill in every time Adam's gone. Well, uh, let's see when the reviews come in, because, you know, you started the <laughs> podcast by reading the reviews about 
how amazing Adam is and he how he's the second coming of podcasters. And now <laughs> I'm gonna read all the reviews. We're like, who is that jackass interrupting Dax and trying to make bad jokes? And so I'm not reading any reviews of this show. So and please don't that your next episode when when Adam is on, read reviews. So like, thank God Adam is back because that guy was terrible. He so was please awful. Don't do that. Don't do, <laughs> don't do that to my ego. All right. Just ignore all those bad reviews because I'm sure people are used to you like they described the two friends talking about gossip and so you know we 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 we're acquaintances we don't Listen, know Listen I said well. when Adam's gone not for good I just said okay. when he's out okay. I will I I will invite you back for sure Adam's Adam uh, and I go so deep back there Oh by the way you got any uh who you going for the Super Bowl Chiefs uh, 49ers All right so I know we've talked to ta- about Taylor Swift a lot on this podcast but mm-hmm. I was going to root for the 49ers because I'm I'm a Jets fan so I always like to root uh, root against any team that's awesome. So but because of all the hubbub over the last couple of weeks about all these conspiracies that have come out, now I cannot wait to see f- for the world to burn when Taylor Swift is kissing the Lombardi trophy. So I will be <laughs> I will be rooting for the Chiefs even though it gets every fiber of my being because I want to see how the world is going to react when there's a selfie with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey hugging the Vince Lombardi Super Bowl trophy. I cannot wait to see that happen. Well, you know what I I like about that is there's so many haters that love to throw women under the bus when they're dating an athlete and the team doesn't do well or he doesn't do well on the field. Yeah, the jinx, like the Kardashian jinx. We saw it over and over. People talked about it. It's it would be very nice that no one could blame Taylor Swift, you know, because up to this point, they would have been like, oh, Taylor is the reason they didn't make it yeah. to playoffs. Oh, Taylor is the reason they didn't make it to the Super Bowl. Taylor, that's the part that I, it, it'd be nice, sweet vengeance. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, it's it's hard for me, Dax, because I uh, not that the 49ers are an underdog if you're a sports fan, but. Like they're pretty equal, but you know the the Chiefs are a third a dynasty. They're like the best team in football. So it's hard for me to root for them this weekend, but I'm going to because man, Dax, I cannot wait to listen to the Raw Rundown next week when you <laughs> when, when you guys are breaking down all the conspiracies and all the mm-hmm. people saying that Taylor was the one pulling the strings behind the scenes to make sure that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. So I'm praying for that on Sunday. And Adam is there. So for people that don't know, Adam is actually in Mm. Vegas right now covering all of the parties and stuff going on surrounding the Super Bowl. He does this every year. So um, next week we will have an entire post Super Bowl rundown interviews that he got while he was there. People he talked to um, any kind of like gossip that he's hearing on the street. We will have all of that next week because that is what he does best. It is truly his bread and butter. He loves, well, he loves sports, but he also loves pop culture. So it's like the Super Bowl is like primo for Adam. And I love always getting to hear what his adventures were like. Now, you know, Adam better than anybody, but I always talk to him about the grind of that weekend because it's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of events. Do you think he's really enjoying it? Do you think he's having fun? Because it's a lot. It's like it's bouncing around the party to party. Or, or do, you, do you part of him or is it like a masochist where he just does it because he loves the pressure of having yeah. to run all over town? I don't think he loves it. I think he he's good at it. And so he does it because he knows that there's always going to be something great that comes out of it. Yeah. Um. But it's funny. So many times like when the, the Super Bowl was in Miami or whatever, I will – talk to him and I'm like oh how'd it go he's like great I was on a plane during the game because he will literally (laughs) stay there for all three parties and then right when the game starts he gets on a plane to come back because he's Uh, like okay now I got to go get some rest because I've been up for days and days straight so he like misses the Super Bowl because I I think I was excited to be like did you see Rihanna perform and he's like oh I missed it I'm like what (laughs) (laughs) well this podcast is gonna get so popular that you guys will be invited to this Taylor Swift box next year so he won't have to cover it you guys will be there eating (laughs) caviar and mini hot dogs Uh, and the future is bright for this podcast (laughs) love it well Joe thank you so much where can people find you on social media yeah, I'm everywhere at Joe Partavilla or TikTok at Jay Partavilla. I wrote a book called Good Listen. If you want to help your communication skills, you're into podcasting, that's available everywhere. But yeah, reach out, say hi. 
please don't leave a bad review that I did a terrible filling in for. <laughs> him. Just don't do. It. I'm I'm a very sensitive young man. Please just just be kind. Be kind just with be the reviews kind. this week. But, but do leave a review because we do appreciate hmm. the reviews. They're what helps us the most kind of go up in the charts. Um, we did mention earlier in the uh, the chat, the Facebook group. We invite everyone to come join us on our private Facebook group called Off the Record. Um, it is it's like a little fun family community where we're always talking about whatever's going on in the world or in pop culture. And we answer you guys' questions directly. So, Joe, feel free to come join the Off the Record Facebook I will, group. but I will not read your reviews because I read <laughs> one review of a podcast I did years ago where yeah. I was still hosting this sex science podcast, and we were getting all these great reviews, but uh, like half of them were like, love the show, love Jana, the guy's really annoying. So I am not, <laughs> I'm not going to read him. So if you're going to leave a, something nasty about me to this week, I won't read it. You know what's it. funny though? That's human nature to read and focus on the bad ones. Of course. Because you could read a hundred love this guy love this guy but the one they're like this guy sounds like a squirrely snake you're gonna be like this motherfucker wait it, you think you think i sound like a swirly snake okay guys we gotta go <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much joe for joining me really really appreciate this you can find us on social media at hollywood raw podcast uh we're on tiktok instagram facebook youtube all of it you can follow me at dax holt you can follow adam at adam glenn and we will see you next time Bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.